Okay, hello everyone, it's uh, Keegan here from Curious Engineering doing a, another video uh, continuing our Altera University series, Lab 2 Part 3. So I know it's been a while, finished school, did a two week military exercise, but now I finally have some time to enjoy the heat, which I'm sweating in right now. But I will also have time and renewed effort to uh, do some more videos. So please look to see some more. We're going to have a bunch more coming out, hopefully, finish off some of these uh, labs. <clears throat> So just a quick little overview on what we're going to do for this lab is we're going to introduce the full adder. So it's a great component. It's the basis of a lot of larger components. And uh, we're also going to implement a ripple carry form of that, which allows you to not only represent just a really basic unit, which takes two inputs, but expand that to potentially a four-bit input and, and represent larger and larger numbers. So um, OK, so I'm going to jump to my main screen. Before we kind of do that, I want to talk a little bit about or kind of introduce you to Adafruit if you haven't ever been here. It's fantastic. Not only do I can you purchase you know basic thing electronic or electric components like resistors, capacitors. You can purchase LCDs. You can purchase Raspberry Pi components, uh, little shields. And not only can you buy them, but they they really emphasize this learn section. So anything that you buy, they're going to give you tutorials exactly on how to implement those. So it's just. You know, it could be of like the wiring diagrams, the schematics, could be libraries that you need to add for some of your uh, Python uh, projects on your Raspberry Pi. So it's just, it's very, very cool and it's a uh, um, <coughs> very comprehensive, uh, you know, site. So again, you know, here's an example of like, hey, how do you do your, your wiring and everything like that. So it's just, it's great. Step by step, uh, really encourage you uh, to go there if you want to learn about these things. It's one less barrier to entry. So very cool. Okay, so let's go to our purpose here. Uh, let's talk about the full adder. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, this project we're going to be using only switches and LEDs. So, we're going to use five LEDs. We're going to have four represent our sum, and then our fifth one's going to be that overflow carry out. And then we're going to have two four bit inputs. For A, we're going to use kind of switches seven through four, and for B, we're going to use switches three through zero. And if we want to spice things up a little bit, we're going to have a carry in if we want to see how that implements our uh, or how that can affect our circuitry. <coughs> so let's take a step back here. So what is a full adder? A full adder is it's kind of uh, as it says in its name, it's going to be adding things for us. So it could be addition, it could be incrementing uh, plus plus kind of things, or it could be decrementing minus minus things. So uh, that's its purpose. And what it really is composed of is it's composed of two half adders. So what is a half adder? It's basically well, it's not basically. It is too. It's an exclusive OR gate and an AND gate. Uh, a and B are connected to both. And if you have, uh, if you know exclusive OR and AND gate, this is pretty straightforward. But let's walk through an example of uh, uh, a four-bit, um, two four-bit inputs. So if A were to be zero one one zero, we know that's going to be a decimal six, and B is zero one zero one. <clears throat> that's a decimal five. So six plus five. We anticipate 11. So if we look at that situation, if we have A is 0 and B is logic level high, exclusive OR is going to be triggered on, so sum should be 1, right? Correct, we see a 1 there. And if we flip the situation, if A is on logic level high and B is logic level low, uh, exclusive OR will also be uh, true, so sum is going to be 1. Excellent. Now, if they're both on, we exclusive or that should be a zero. We shouldn't see a sum, so we don't see a sum, but we should see a carry. Uh, so just like normal math, uh, we carry to the next most significant bit, and that will be representing a one. So the number at the end of the day is one zero one one, which is eight plus two plus one is eleven. Got it. So it works out. Fantastic. Uh, if this was straightforward to you, fantastic. Uh, if this Boolean algebra was a little bit or maybe you just need a little brusher up. There's uh, tons of tons of great YouTubes out there, so I encourage you to go look, go look at those. <clears throat> okay, so for this lab, the full adder is essentially connecting two half adders in series, but it's really taking advantage of the um, what we have here is a carry in. So this is a vitally important part of being able to use a full adder and expanding it in series to, to, to represent that ripple carry adder. So what do I mean by that? Ripple carry adder, it's using the output of the least significant full adder 
as the input for the next most significant adder. So by doing this setup, this is how you can see this Boolean algebra carrying to the next most significant bit by connecting our carry outs and our carry ins correctly. This is how we can implement larger and larger numbers, or represent larger and larger numbers, I should say. <coughs> now, what you might notice if you look at this lab, they, the previous slide, that's a really standard implementation just using basic logic gates. What they've done here from this lab is they've used an alternative representation, uh, primarily using a mux gate. So you might be saying, well, how do I know that that is true? And it's it's a good question to ask. You should always do that. And I, you know, as I as I've recommended in other videos, always go back to the truth table. That is your source of truth. So go back to that. And if you were to kind of follow this truth table, you will see that it is exactly equivalent to the two half adder implementation as well. So uh, since this is uh, what they're using in the lab, we're gonna try and do. We're gonna code to that uh, specifically so um, but again if you would prefer using basic logic gates you should at the end of the day you're gonna have the same um, outputs and the same behavior that that circuit is going to be doing so just a different way of doing it that's all okay so now let's talk about the code <clears throat> so I don't want to talk about the top level just yet I want to talk about the full adder module specifically so let me get that into the screen so all we're going to do is we want to implement that circuit exactly uh, as our base module. So I'm going to call it just, it's a, it's a module, I'm going to call it full adder so I can reference it later. It's going to take five parameters. It's going to have three inputs and two outputs. Um, and then we're going to essentially just represent the outputs as a, uh, using assigned statements um, with, the, with the inputs. Sorry, I struggled a little bit there. Anyways, um, again in the previous video or maybe two videos ago, we we did the uh, alluded to the conditional con conditional operator, and that's how we're going to represent the mux essentially. So I would just go straight forward and then just using everything that we know about uh, Verilog and representing OR gates, exclusive OR gates, AND gates, just go right through that, and then you should essentially end up at the same spot as me. So. Um, I'll take any questions if you're you're wondering kind of about any of this notation, but uh, this is exactly a representation of the uh, what you see here. So, okay, so now let's go to our top level. So you know, again, we have our inputs as our switches. We don't want to necessarily connect our switches. We want to connect those wires uh, to our modules. So I've said I've declared <coughs> um, A, B, and S as Four bit inputs, you know, or four bit wires, I should say, buses, buses. And then we also have uh, a carry, a C, as uh, we have three of those. And then we have at the very output, sorry, let me s include this. Again, we're just essentially creating wires for all of these different uh, arrows that you see here. Okay. Now. Let's talk a little about what's going on here. Let me scroll it so it's in your view. So this is a little bit different, and we haven't done this before. So we're going to use dot named port style connections. So this is a great way. It's a really safe way of implementing your modules. So in the past, um, we had to be really specific about which wire you know, uh, we are connecting, because the way this module is laid out, it depends the order is very depend very important for your parameters that you're passing so if you were to potentially m miss one or do one incorrectly the circuit will behave very differently from what you're probably anticipating so using dot name port style what it's doing is saying like hey for this instantiation of this module for this full adder f0 that I'm gonna call it find the the a parameter input parameter and I want you to connect to that uh, the least significant A wire. So, fantastic. If I were to like move this to the end or get it out of order, I've kept it in order just for good practices, but if I were to move all of these around, it would still work because we're using this dot named port style connection. So, 
it's a it's a preventative measure and I would really recommend that you do use it so cool so you know if you were to just reference this diagram and connect everything accordingly this is the F0 this is what I'm calling F1 F2 F3 it's pretty straightforward for your A and your B connections that you can see it's labeled as such just be careful with your carry ins and your carry outs that's really what's going to be important to uh, having this ripple carry effect so make sure that the output of your least significant one goes to the input of your next most significant full adder okay fantastic so let's uh, implement this I've done this a few times so feel free to skip Oh, I just I had to do this before to verify so let me uh, close everything um, but again, I know I've done this quite a bit, uh, gone through this step by step. So if you feel pretty comfortable, feel free to skip ahead. But uh, if you don't feel comfortable, then uh, feel free to watch. So I'm going to delete what I just made. Uh, again, we want to create our own project folder. <clears throat> and then I'm going to title it accordingly as the exact same thing. Uh, yes. Okay. Again, in my code, I've started to keep this uh, target number in there just so I can copy and paste it for ease. We're not going to add files at this time. We want to pick our right board. So we've, I've copied and pasted that. That's our target that we're going to be targeting. We're not going to use anything uh, in terms of tools specifically. I'm going to finish that. Let it load here. Okay, we've gone to our files. We want to create a new Verilog file. Okay, we're going to copy and paste what we have here. I can click. There we go. And then but let's save it. So we're going to save it as Lab 2 Part 3. Let's save it the same name. Names are really important. So let's make sure we do that correctly. Um, now let's do our pin connection. So we're going to go to our assignments, assignment editor. Uh, this will be just for verification. As I've used in various other videos, uh, we want to use the tickle console. That's going to make life so much easier. Um, I would, if you're a little bit confused as where I got these files, go back to uh, lab one, part one. I go through a number of different ways to get these uh, tickle commands. And it's just going to save you a ton of time as opposed to the manual version. I know I say that in every video, but it will save you a lot of time. <clears throat> okay, so we have all our switches that we have more than we actually need, but that's fine. Um, but we have at the minimum everything that we do need. So Okay, so we have our assignments, we have our source files, and we are going to compile. So let's let that do its own thing and then we'll implement this and see that it works correctly okay we're done okay we're done so now we want to check to make sure everything went well so zero, zero arrows, 21 warnings uh, let's check a look at those quick Make sure nothing concerning. And I'm okay with those. So let's move on to programming. <clears throat> let's make sure our board is on. And we have, let's detect it. Make sure your hardware is accordingly. We want to make sure we pick the correct target. Let's do that. Let's load a output file, a .osof file. So make sure you go to output files. There should be your SOF file if everything compiled correctly. I should remove that one because we only care about the one that actually has the file on it. <coughs> and let's program. Okay, so if we have two 4 bit inputs, uh, there's a lot of different situations. And well, so, and you have a, and potentially a carry in, so that's 2 to the 9th. I think about 512 different possibilities. Uh, I can't represent all of those here, and I don't. I definitely don't want to test all of those scenarios. So let's uh, pick a couple of ones. So I've just selected some of interest here. So I'm going to test this scenario where it's three plus three, so we know that should be six. So uh, let's test that now. Sorry, I just thirsty. Don't worry, that's not beer. That's Gatorade. 
just have it in the big glass because I'm very thirsty and sweating a lot here. It's hot. Okay, <clears throat> so let's test that. Uh, look to see that in the right screen here. So we're going to do a 3 plus 3. Oops, hit the wrong one. And we should see 6. So we do. Fantastic. So we feel good. Okay. Now let's do our next one. What we want to really test is we want to see that fifth LED. We want to see that overflow uh, move into the next most significant bit. So I've picked some larger numbers. So I've picked uh, 8 plus 4, 13 plus 13. So that should be 26, right, which expands outside of our 4-bit range. But since we do have that overflow one, that's, that allows us to represent a 5-bit number. So 13 plus 13, uh, that should be uh, 16 plus 8 plus 2, that should be... Oh my gosh, man. 26, right? 13 plus 13, duh. Anyways, okay, so let's see that that behaves correctly. So let's press those buttons. <clears throat> and in fact, we do get a 26. So, excellent. We feel great about that. And I encourage you to try other scenarios just to see that we have done a correct implementation. But um, I feel pretty confident about this one. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me comments. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. But uh, it's been a good lab, so let's move on to the next one. Still got more to go. All right.